Thank you, Jesus. Hi, viewers. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, we thank God for yet another day that we've woken up alive and well. And for those who are sick, I am praying for your healing in Jesus' name. For those who are stressed, those who are anxious over, uh, over anything, I'm praying that the peace of God that surpasses humanic understanding is going to fill your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus. Welcome back. Welcome back. Uh, today we are looking at um, a, a topic that I've entitled, Work Out Your Salvation. Praise the Lord. Work Out Your Salvation. So, the Bible states in the book of 2 Corinthians 5.17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Praise the Lord. All things are become new. Everything about you becomes new. Why? Because the moment you give your life to Jesus Christ, then you start a new walk with God. You are conscious that you are a child of God. You are a conscious God worshiper. You start having expectations that when you pray, God is going to meet you at every point of your need. Hallelujah. And so uh, you are a new creature. Spiritually, everything about you changes. Your destination changes because by receiving Christ, it means you are choosing life. Therefore, if you are headed to hell, then you've turned directions. You're going to heaven. However, anytime you give your life to Jesus Christ, I always tell people nothing about your physical features changes. You cannot uh, receive Jesus Christ today and you are dark and then tomorrow you wake up, you are light because now you gave your life to Jesus. The change is more spiritual. Praise the Lord. Although with time, if you are if you are worn out because of alcohol, you know, you are an alcoholic, you are a drug abuser, you looked haggard, you looked older than your age. When you receive Jesus Christ, of course, one year after you are walking in this beautiful salvation, people will meet you and they will they will talk about you like the guy who was, you know, crippled outside the beautiful gates. They will say, this is she. And others will say, no, it is not. Why? Because walking with Christ has brought about change in your life praise god if you used to dress in pieces of clothes you now start dressing in clothes hallelujah if you if you you are dirty now you can shower you can brush your teeth you can comb your hair something about you will change definitely but it takes time praise the lord and so uh the bible says in philippians the book of philippians that's what i want us to look at today praise god chapter 2 and verse 12 to 12 Wherefore, my beloved, as you, ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation mm -hmm. with fear yeah. and yeah. trembling. Praise God. Work out your own salvation. So we are going to look at this thing of working out our salvation. How do we work out salvation? Uh, does salvation need working out? Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Does salvation need working out? Does salvation need something like practice? Praise the Lord. Does salvation need for you to do anything other than commit your life to Jesus Christ? Is there anything that is needed? Praise the Lord. Because you see, this is where... Uh, this is where some people get lost. If you give your life to Jesus and then you have, you don't go to church, you don't fellowship, and then you, 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 you fall into a fellowship that is not serious about salvation, that is not serious about the, the word of God, that is not serious about change, you know, people, and then we have this thing of don't judge me. You know, you somebody's obviously a drunk, you tell them stop drinking, they say, don't judge me. Somebody's obviously living in obvious immorality. When you talk, they say, stop judging us. So at what point are we judging you? And at what point are you supposed to really now understand that you are born again and everything that is old about you has passed away and everything about you has become new? Praise God. So 
Working out means that if let's say you're going to the gym to work out some fat, it means you have something in you that you want to get rid of in your physical uh, uh, structure. There is or there are cubes you want to make, muscles you want to acquire. If you have been, uh, you've suffered stroke, they will work you out. You will be exercising with a medic. They will be helping you to stretch your muscles so that you can walk again. Praise God. Some some people get so sick that they can't talk and they are taken through uh, uh, practice, physical tongue exercise, where they start rolling out words again. They are working out their tongues so that they can start talking no more again. Praise God. Hey, I and you, praise God. I've missed you. I've missed you, my brother. Hope you're keeping well. Praise God. So let me tell you something. If you're born again, you born again, salvation is a daily thing, daily exercise. You wake up born again, you live the whole day born again, you go to sleep born again, meaning you have an active relationship with God throughout your day. You are not going to exercise godly values on Sundays alone. You're not going to exercise godly values when you are only in fellowships or when you are in an environment where you are surrounded by believers. But the moment you move deeper into Egypt and you are in a place where there are no believers, then you become like one of them. Then it becomes hard for anybody to describe you as a child of God. Praise the Lord. So the Bible is calling us. Paul is saying, work out your your salvation work out your salvation with fear and with trembling praise god mm -hmm. so how do you work out your salvation because obviously when you got born again there was one two three four five sins maybe that you are so hooked upon you know a sin that you've practiced since you were born until you are 18 years old that's when you make a concrete decision to follow jesus that sin becomes like you know part and parcel of you it's part of you i've ever met chronic liars they lie until they, even when they have no reason to lie automatically they you know automatically they lie you ask somebody hi where are you they tell you i actually i am going to the shop they are in their sitting room they are holding a remote control they have no they have there is no need for them to lie but they are pathological liars they've lied until you don't know where the lie begins and where they they start praise god so some of these sins they in hebrews they are called besetting sins mm -hmm. sins that so easily ensnare us even when you are born again like this i know people who are born again Today in this crusade, tomorrow, they remembered they received Jesus when they were drinking their third bottle. You know that? Mm -hmm. Somebody's on bottle number three, beer. Yeah. That, that's when they ask you, hey, Renzi, did you not just get born again yesterday? And you go, ah. And then you start saying, I hope these Christians do not find me here. You're running away because, you know, we've been taught that the only, the best way of transformation is when we lie. Praise God, church. We don't have to lie. We can work out our salvation. So how do you work out your salvation? You work out your salvation through daily practice. Some of these things, when you get born again, you are going to practice them. You are going to force yourself, force your spirit, force your body to align. You are going to acquire a new mindset. Praise the Lord. You're going to acquire a new mindset so that now you think as a child of God. And then after thinking, thinking is not enough. You are going to drop it into your character. You will start behaving in a manner that suggests that you are a child of God. So working out your salvation means that every day you wake up, you are a child of God. You are conscious you are a child of God. When you start arguing with somebody, praise God. Uh, let's say when you are, uh, when you are what? When you are acquiring a potty. You are a brother, you are a man, and you know, you have a biceps. And then suddenly you notice that your stomach is becoming flappy. What do you do? You run back to the gym, eh? and you start, hey, 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 because you want to get rid of some fats that you've seen. So if you are born again, and then suddenly you realize, nowadays you really have a... You are missing your...
your bottle, your beer bottle, you're missing it so much. Suddenly you feel like you're missing your disco so much. Suddenly you feel like you've been away, Renzi. You know, you, you have not gone to bongo night anywhere for so long. Then if you start feeling like that, that is the time you now look for an alternative, an alternative outlet to your pent up emotions so that you're not going to give in to that temptation. That is called working up. For example, you are arguing with somebody who is so nasty, who is so annoying. You know, you know people who just provoke you to become your old you. Mm -hmm. You know them. You argue with them, then you find you forgot you were born again, you forgot Jesus was Lord, you forgot that you're not supposed to fight. You, you People who can easily make you forget that Christ lives in you. Those are, when you try to avoid such people, Kaleche, you, they come this way, you walk this way. When you, ukiskia, like, that argument is now coming up. You shut up, you close down, and you look at them. You exercise self-control, uh, forcefully putting on the image of Christ. That is what is called working out your salvation. Mm -hmm. When you are with this, with this man who looks like a, who looks like a Joseph to you and you are Mrs. Fortifa, and this Joseph, you are even holding his garment, the power of Joseph looking and reasoning within himself and saying, I fear this man. He has given me everything in his house. However, even if this man will not catch me, how about God? That is exercising, working out your salvation. You can not work out salvation your salvation without a provocation mm -hmm. without an obvious temptation just like you will not go to the gym if you don't have extra kgs i am yet to find somebody uh who is what six seven height they weigh 40 kgs and they still want to go to the gym you know is it like to meet somebody who is recovering from cancer when the bones are out, you know, have you ever seen somebody who is thin until it's like the skin is like a, a piece of cloth that is tying the bones? Hmm? And then that somebody tells you they want to go to the gym. What will you say? You are mad. You can't make it. Why don't you? In fact, you are advising them to fatten up. Mm -hmm. So you only work out if you have something you want to get rid of in excess. So anytime you, you, you find that you are old you, is having a weight on you the best thing i advise people is to exercise righteousness to work out your salvation to make sure Renzi, that you get rid of that thing if somebody so annoys you you know god can bring in a pointer in your life you you know sometimes when we walk without provocation we say Msonye, ah, because you have nobody to annoy you but the day you will meet somebody who annoys you by simply appearing in your environment, that is when you will know that you, ha you have the spirit of uncurrency. Mm -hmm. And you see, sometimes God will allow that person to cross your path, cross your path, cross your path, until you learn how to live with that person. Until you overcome evil with the good. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. You start by, you are annoyed, you are annoyed until you reach a place in Sonia where they no longer annoy you. Mm. When, when you find them, you know, have you ever had this person who steals from you, steals from you, steals from you, until when you find them carrying anything from you, you just laugh. You are no longer annoyed. You just laugh. You say, but today I've caught you. Return it. You're not even going to have a sitting range at home. Let's sit here. You stole for, there. You, you, you have, you have so mastered the art of this person stealing from you until when they steal it it does not irritate you praise the lord mm -hmm. working out your salvation in the book of second timothy 2 19 second timothy 2 19 hallelujah uh paul is talking to us and he's telling us this he's saying uh nevertheless the foundations of god stand sure Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. And I want you to underline the word depart. Depart means what? Means walking away, not unconsciously. Consciously from sin. You know, this is sin. This is the right thing. The sin is pulling you to sin. 
but you close your eyes and you will yourself to walk away. Everyone who names the name of Christ, depart from iniquity. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Depart from iniquity. That's why I tell people, when something really irritates you, just allow yourself to get irritated so that you can walk away from it. And like when somebody wrongs you, you don't sort it out. You don't talk to them. You, you, don't, you don't alert them. They've hurt you. You pretend you're so good at putting things inside you. But then now every single day of your life, even 20 years from today, that thing will still be eating you on the inside. Why? Because you never got annoyed. You never, you, you were, you never moved. When it happened, you didn't react. You tried to, you know, walking away from iniquity means that you've seen the iniquity. You have, uh, you've counted the cost and you've decided to take a walk. Walk away. I am not going to do this. You walk away. But when you look at it, there's a way you can rage about it. There's a way you can throw a tantrum, but it's not going. Paul says, be ye angry, but do not let the sun go down. You will sleep. You will have peace when you're going to sleep. You will pray when you're going to sleep. You'll be in a position where you can talk to other people. Praise God. You know, there are people when they are offended. Eh? When they are offended, somebody is offended in a family. Uh, let's say we wake up here and Musonya is offended. He is not going to talk to any of us. He is not going to greet us. When you tell him good morning, sir, he looks at you. You say good morning, daddy. The next thing he asks you, Nini, because he is annoyed, he is offended, he does not want to be, he is not going to speak to anybody. We, we don't even know what happened to him. He went yesterday, he came home annoyed, and he's taking it out on us. We don't know what is happening with him. And instead of telling the person who offended them that they were offended, instead of working it out there, they come into the home and they pour it out on us. I have seen that so much in believers' homes. Where believers believe they can only take out their, their rages on believers. So what happens to this pastor? When the church annoys him, he will not tell the church that he was annoyed. He is going to swallow it and pretend he's very understanding. But when he gets home, for one week, the wife and the children, they're going to suffer. Why? Because the man of God was offended in the church. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So work out your salvation. The Bible says... Anyone who names the name of Jesus Christ must depart mm. from iniquity. You are born again. You want to engage in spiritual warfare. You must depart from iniquity. Departation is sure. You and iniquity must go separate ways. Akuna, please, it's mandatory. Praise the Lord. Mm. It's, it's mandatory. But we have no option but to change, my brothers and my sisters. If you want to receive something from God, if you want to see the grace of God, if you want to see, I had somebody from Tanzania, they were busy abusing God because they, they, they decided to say that uh, their president was a God-fearing man. He was calling God every day, and yet God allowed him to die. Who is God? He'd rather take his bangi and, and everything. Let me talk to every fool out there who feels like they can abuse God however they want. If you are not going to depart from iniquity, if you are not going to fear God, if you are not going to work out your salvation, my friend, you will meet with the devil on the highway of life. You will surely meet him. And when you expect God to protect you, he will not do it. Praise the Lord. He will not do it. Did the Rasta man think maybe God did not answer the prayers of the president because of him? If he is the kind of somebody who is also praying for him and he's, he can turn against God like that, why would God answer your prayers? Praise the Lord. Anyway, anyone who names the name of Christ must depart from iniquity. Work out your salvation. Departing from iniquity is the number one walking out and working out praise the lord every time you know your weaknesses when you got born again before christ came to dwell richly in you you are uh what do you call them these people chain smoker you are a chain smoker you are a prostitute you are immoral you are 
a man in every city you had a mpango wa kando. You were unfaithful to your spouse, unfaithful to your wife, unfaithful to your husband. Now that you have Christ in you, the first thing you do is to walk away from that kind of life. Consciously walk away from your mistress. Consciously walk away from your Ben 10. Praise the Lord. Consciously stop your immorality. Consciously. It's, you make a decision. You say, now that I have Christ in me, I am going to stop my immorality. I am going to get rid of this, my lying. I am going to stop this hatred. You know, some of us, we are so full of hate until we hate even in the church. Praise the Lord. I have seen people who feel free to hate others because they are in a denomination that they think is not godly. Hallelujah. If they are in this church that you deem not spiritual, then you can't even pray with them. Praise the Lord. You can't pray with them because they are in another church that you know they don't believe in the Holy Spirit. They don't pray in tongues. But those are children of God. You bring your hatred into the church. You can't even talk to them. You won't fellowship with them. If they are preaching in any place, you will not sit and listen. I mean, you know everything. Praise the Lord. Let's fear God and let's respect God. Let us start by walking away from iniquity. Praise the Lord. That is how we are going to work out our salvation. Consciously turning away from iniquity. In Chronicles, he said, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and turn away from their wickedness, then I will hear their prayer. I will come down and answer them. Praise God. He will come and deliver us only if we turn away from our iniquity. You are born again. But that salvation makes no difference. You and the next Mulevi, you are the same. It's only that the Mulevi is drinking in the bar. He is free to stagger. You are not free to stagger. Praise the Lord. You are not free to stagger because you are a drunkard in secret. In fact, you envy those people who are free to drink. You envy those people who are free to come up with their Ben 10s and say, this is my Ben 10. You envy them. And in fact, you support them. When you go to their meetings, you will support them. But you envy them because you are sinning in secret. You have refused to walk away. Depart from iniquity. The Bible says, work out your salvation. How do you think it is going to, it is going to happen if you choose not to let go of the things that you were busy doing in Egypt? The things that made you receive nicknames eh? in the world. You still don't want to change. You are the best in the black market. You are born again. And as you are, you are making your black market deals, you are calling the name of God. It is called mockery. Praise the Lord. It is called mockery. And why will the wrath of God not come down on us? Praise the Lord. I was, I was watching another program. Uh, I was, uh, there was a time there was this guy that something was trending on, 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 uh, was it Facebook? It was on, on WhatsApp. Eh? There was a guy from South Africa, I think, who decided it's Jesus. And then he had this lady. Who was she now? I don't know who she was. It was Jesus. And then there was another connected light lady. I don't know who she was. I can't remember who, what they called her. And they stripped naked and they were running in the street. They were running in the street. And as they were running, a woman was calling, was asking somebody else in another car, uh, can you call the police? This one says, I'm new in this area. Please call the police. And this guy approached this woman and he said, I am Jesus. Are you going to follow me? And then she was, she hesitated and he said, you are already condemned or something like that. Then he was, he ran away. And then I shared with my friend and I told her, oh my God, you should see what is happening. So we, I don't know. I deleted the thing because you know, some of these things you just, I mean, they are so sickening. So I, when I was telling my friend, like I saw a guy who, you know, in South Africa, he was, he was Jesus and he had this naked woman. Then she told me, let's search. My friend, we entered naked. Uh, she entered naked man running in South Africa. I don't know what I wrote, naked something. And I just saw something come on, on my screen, naked attraction. I clicked that thing. I was so shocked. It is a program. I'm so yeah. It has season one season. It, it is a program. I think from the UK or one of these countries in Europe. And in this program, they are selling naked people. 
they have this dating site or dating club or demonic i don't know what to call it where they parade naked people in boxes and the person who is interested will stand and they will start choosing and there will be there will be this naked person will be screened on they will look at their boobs look at those boobs look at this look at this what, how do you like this naked body and they are calling it naked attraction surely when the wrath of god comes down and is finishing people when people are dying like flies and instead of changing these people they are still looking of better ways to air their programs because the people now are not meeting why won't God scatter people from Sonia? Why won't God make sure there is not one up, not one place where they can meet? Why won't God come down and make it? So walk away from iniquity. Praise God. Walk away from iniquity. There are people today who are believers. They are born again, but they are short. They are this short of becoming porn star actors. They, they, they. They indulge in pornography to the point that you find such people in Christian WhatsApp groups. They forget when they are sending their clips. They send them there. They send them there. And my friend, you should know people are, people are rebellious. If you ask them to delete, they left. They leave the group. Why? They should not be judged. Why are you not going to be judged? If the only clip you can be sent to me is a pond, pond, pond cliff, why are you not going to be judged? The Bible says the righteous shall judge the earth. I always tell people who say don't judge me, I always give them an example of Sonia of a mango tree. If you sit under a mango tree and it is the season of mangoes, sincerely, if there's anything you're going to get from that tree, what will you call it? It's a mango fruit. What if you do this and you come, you come down with an orange? You will stand and run. And you're going to call KTN, CNN, you're going to call everybody. Come and see this tree that is in Nairobi. Everybody, reporters will come from all over the world to see the wonders of the world. This tree that is obviously a mango tree and it is bringing forth uh, oranges or bananas. Praise God. Who will argue with me? It is going to make news, praise the Lord. That is the same way. When you stand, you say, praise the Lord. And you are there. The greatest, uh, what, what takes an 80% of your phone is filled, not with messages, not with sermons, but with pornography. That exercise of you denying yourself Denying your flesh, the pleasures that you receive from watching pornography is what we are calling working out your salvation. With much fear and trembling, praise the Lord, working out your salvation. Walk away from iniquity, 2 Timothy 2.19. Everybody who names the name of Jesus Christ, they must walk away from iniquity. Depart from iniquity. You've watched porn. Let the ones you've watched be enough for the rest of your generations. Let nobody else stand and watch those things again in your life. Walk away. Exercise. Work out your salvation. Praise the Lord. Corinthians, uh, Romans 13. 13, 14, 13, let's, uh, but we can look at 13, 13, Romans. Romans 13. Hallelujah. Paul is talking to us and he says, let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkardness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying. But, 14, Put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the last thereof. These are conscious decisions. You are born again. You will take Christ as a garment. 
The way I wore my dress in the morning, I will wear Jesus the same way. I put my hand there, I put my hand, I put my leg there. I will wear Jesus. Put on Christ. As much as you are born again, when you wake up a new creature, the old is gone. You see, the old is when you used to automatically fall into the steps of your father. Pap. My grandfather was a very annoying man. I am annoying like my grandfather. My grandfather was a very angry man. I am angry like you. You know, in the world, you could, we could even name you. We, we call you Musonye. And then the gods of your fathers, they, they, you, you start crying the whole night. Nga, 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 for four nights. And then this old woman will come and say, uh, this baby is crying because he's rejecting uh, the name that you called him. <laughs> Imagine. And now we say, we start calling the baby uh, in some, in some communities. They will start, let's say it's my daughter Renzi. She has given birth and maybe I'm dead. The father is dead. Our father's in-laws are dead. Or maybe me and Musonye, we are no longer there. And my daughter has a son. And then, no, maybe Renzi's grandchild has given birth to a baby. And now they start naming the child Renzi. <laughs> They say, okay, let's try. And then they say, what was their grand, great grandfather? They, they start calling, Musonye. <laughs> and then they say, Ooh, the baby is called Musonye. Musonye has been born. Musonye has been born. Then you automatically, that, that great grandchild of Musonye, automatically becomes Musonye. Macho red, ukimkasirisha, shouting, akikasirika. Automatically, the baby is sucking the mother. And if the mother does not hold it properly, no, choose the nipple. Hey, and then the mother says, hey, this is like my grandfather. This is like my grandfather, Musonye. This is like my grandfather. Then they're asking, it is not like your, 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 your father. No, 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 my father was a very nice man. And my mother, Renzi, she's a good woman. Eh, but the father, the father was tough. This, this baby is tough. You see, you automatically walk in the place of, you know, you are generational spirits and you wear their character automatically without even struggling in fact you the character is crying to be brought out in you until they have to name you they are compelled to give you a name praise the lord that is but now that you are born again who are you going to wear you will put on christ the lord jesus christ put on you wake up and you decide i am jesus today you know the one you dress until if you're trying to dress like a, if let's say you have what you have a hero you have somebody you hero worship let's say your child those who worship batman uh who, spider man when they are walking in the uh when they are going through any shops they and they see the spider man gears that's what they want and when they get home they are they are wearing the spider man thing and if you are not careful you will pick them from fourth floor because they are also trying to fly like spider man so we are supposed to even ask where jesus msonye until we want to walk on water we want to do everything that jesus was doing consciously we put on christ we put on christ that is working our salvation with much fear and trembling, we walk like Jesus, we talk like Jesus, we become like Jesus, praise God. Until when people look at us, they will behave like this damsel who saw Peter when he was busy denying the Lord. And she told him, you even talk like him. Why are you saying you don't know the guy? You even talk like him, praise God. Have you ever tried to deny Jesus and everybody tells you, but you look like you're born again. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. You look like you're born again. You look like Jesus. You look like Jesus. That is working out your salvation with much fear and trembling. Put on Jesus Christ. It is not please, it's a command. Because every day in your life, you must work out your salvation. Praise the Lord. In the book of Colossians chapter 3. Colossians 3. Hallelujah. I just want us to look again. Because uh, these are the works. Hallelujah. It is not the works that are... Uh, it is not... It is the transformation. 
It is a transformation. And for transformation to happen, you must put in effort. Praise God. You know, the people who are saying we are saved by grace, not by works that anybody should boast. Yes, we did nothing to receive Jesus. It was pure grace. Because you see, Sonia, there's a way people misinterpret this scripture. When they say we are, we are born again through grace, lest any man should boast. They want to supply it to mean that every day we live graciously. I don't know if you are getting me, viewers. The Bible says it is by grace that we receive salvation. It's not by works. Lest any man should boast. We are talking about the beginning. We are talking about the trans transition from darkness into light. It took the grace of God. It took the pure love of God. However, once, you, once the grace has transported you from darkness into light, you now don't abuse the grace anymore. Romans 5. What shall we say now? Shall sin, you know, sin take root? Sin become the prominent thing in our life so that grace may abound. Because many people today, they refuse to follow Jesus Christ. They refuse to walk away from iniquity. They refuse to work out their salvation simply because they were born again by grace. You being born again by grace is okay. It is the only way you can receive salvation. Look at me, Veronica. If it was not the grace of God, who would have chosen me for salvation? Who would have chosen me for salvation? I mean, I would be at the end of the line, Musonye. Me, I would be still waiting. I would be saying, me, even me, I want to get in. Even me, I want to get in. Nobody would allow me in. It took the grace of God. You and your mothers. How many abortions have you done? How many? And today you are preaching. Today you are praying in tongues until men are vibrating and falling on the ground. What do you think costed God and costed you for salvation? Grace, nothing. However, now that the grace of God has ushered you into salvation, you are still sinning. And when we ask you, you say, don't judge me. It is by the grace. Which grace? My friend, which grace? The only grace that is available to you after salvation is the grace that enables you to say no to sin. Praise the Lord. Uh, I would also want to read that one. So that these uh, graceful sinners, people who refuse to follow Jesus Christ, people who are forever the pigs that are going back, praise God, to, to their vomit, people who are forever going back to their vomit, uh, must do what? Must stop with their sin. Praise the Lord. The grace has been revealed to men that enables men to say no to sin. The grace for the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. Hallelujah. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Titus chapter 2, 11 and 12. Praise God. The grace that that the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. What does this grace teach us? Teaching us that denying ungodliness. I have seen people who have refused to deny ungodliness. And they are holding on to grace. In fact, one day somebody asked me. If today the Lord would come back and find me in the act of fornication. Will I go to heaven? Hallelujah. And I said, I don't think you'll go to... They said, why? Why won't I go to heaven and it is by grace? By grace. If it is by grace, then everybody is going to heaven. Please. If the Lord comes today and finds you in the hotel room, fornicating, committing adultery, and you are there lying to yourself, you'll go to heaven because you sang in the Sunday choir. My friend, you are so going to hell. 
The grace of God brings salvation. It enables men. It teaches us to deny ungodliness. How come your grace does not teach you to deny drunkenness? How come this grace that has saved you is not teaching you to deny immorality? How come this grace is not teaching you how to be kind? How come this grace is just teaching you to be mean, mean, meaner than the meanest? Praise God. Denying ungodliness and worldly lust. To live soberly. The people that are crying for the grace ministry today, most of them, and I'm sorry, I am so sorry to preach this, but most of them, they are abusing the work of God. They are bringing confusion to so many people because they, they are already, they are confusing people. You're finding prostitutes, people we know that they are living in immoral sin outright. They are the ones leading worship in the church, please. We know them. We know they are struggling with masturbation. They are struggling. And when they come to church, they are not coming to hospital. They are coming as the doctors. Who, is going, who are you going to doctor? Even Jesus says, the blind leading the blind. Where are they going? They are falling into the pit. Church, wake up. I don't know what makes people think. If you come rich in the church, you deserve a place. You deserve the place of elder. You deserve. There's a, there's a, there's once upon a time in a certain church we were. We went for this meeting where they wanted to get. Uh, what do you call these people who organize funerals? <laughs> uh, just like a funeral committee in the church. That would uh, take care of people when they die. And I remember asking them. Uh, we are in the church. We are preparing a funeral committee. Nobody's dead. So we are preparing for people to die or what are we doing? Everybody looked at me with very bad eyes. Then I kept quiet. Now they started talking about the people that would incorporate in the in the in the in that group. They started talking about the rich people in the church, those rich people who come to church. And some of those rich people we knew, they were immoral, they were they were the drunkards in the in that estate they were the drunkards if you are going to hear people who are abusing each other they are drunk it is those people but they come to church on sunday they started choosing those people then i asked them why are you putting drunkards in the committee in the church we don't we don't have sober people in the church they told me if we put you do you have any money i said oh so you are putting them because of their money they said yes i felt so sorry for the church of jesus christ it's like they don't read their Bibles. Even, even Paul himself said, for you to be a deacon, number one, you must, you are, your family must be aligned. You cannot be on wife number four. You are not educating the children of wife number one. And just because you have money, you are the elder in the church. Excuse me, church. Please, we have some God-fearing people in the church. Give them positions. I am not saying that the ones with the fifth wife, then tenth wife, the immoral, they should not come. But let them come for ministration. The church is the place for the sick. In fact, if you go to a church that do not have prostitutes, thieves, and the thugs, then that's not a church. That's an organization. However, these people in the church, what position are they holding? Other than sitting on the benches and receiving the word of God. Because the word of God will transform them. Praise the Lord. So can we be careful in the name of Jesus? So number one, working out your salvation is walking away from iniquity. And number three uh, is, uh, number two is what? Putting on Christ. So today we are going to get to up to that point. We continue tomorrow in the name of Jesus Christ. So God bless you and keep you and remember to keep it under Jesus. Walk as Jesus. Put on Christ in your life. Walk like Jesus, look like Jesus, talk like Jesus. Stay blessed in Jesus' name.